عدنا مرة أخرى أصدقائي إلى درس الاستماع إلى اللغة الإنجليزية مرحبا بكم أصدقائي مشاهدي ومتابعي قناة English سيت لتعلم اللغة الإنجليزية لكي لا أطيل عليكم في هذا الدرس سوف نستمع إلى اللغة الإنجليزية سوف نستفيد كلمات وتعابير جديدة ونتدرب أيضا على النطق إذا سوف نستمع إلى كل مقطع مرتين في المرة الأولى سوف نرى ما يقال باللغة الإنجليزية حاولوا أن تفهموا وسوف أعيد المقطع للمرة الثانية وأضيف الترجمة إلى اللغة العربية هيا بنا So if you want to speak English like Faisal with that great confidence here's the one thing that you can do When you speak don't focus on yourself Focus on the other person and the result you want to achieve. Imagine a next generation of Malaysians all with that wonderful confidence in communication that Faisal has at any level of English. Because let's remember that English today, it's not an art to be mastered. It's just a tool to use to get a, a result. And that tool belongs to you. So if you want to speak English like Faisal with that great confidence, here's the one thing that you can do. When you speak, don't focus on yourself. Focus on the other person and the result you want to achieve. Imagine a next generation of Malaysians all with that wonderful confidence in communication that Faisal has at any level of English. Because let's remember that English today, it's not an art to be mastered. It's just a tool to use to get a, a result. And that tool belongs to you. There are people out there who have a very, very low level of English and they can communicate very, very well. There are people out there who have a very, very low level of English and they can communicate very, very well. One of them that I remember was a student, a participant of mine named Faisal. He was a factory supervisor. English level very, very low. But this guy could just sit and listen to anybody very calmly, clearly, and then he could respond, absolutely express his thoughts beautifully at a very low level of English. One of them that I remember was a student, a participant of mine named Faisal. He was a factory supervisor. English level very, very low. But this guy could just sit and listen to anybody very calmly, clearly, and then he could respond, absolutely express his thoughts beautifully at a very low level of English. So today I want to share with you what is so different about people like Faisal. How do they do it? And second of all, why is this so important? Not only to you, but to your children, to your community, and to the future of Malaysia. And third of all, what's one thing you can do starting today if you want to speak with that calm, clear confidence that people like Faisal has? So today I want to share with you what is so different about people like Faisal. How do they do it? And second of all, why is this so important not only to you, but to your children, to your community, and to the future of Malaysia? And third of all, what's one thing you can do starting today if you want to speak with that calm, clear confidence that people like Faisal has? So first of all, what is so different? How do people like Faisal do it? So to answer that question, I'm going to take you back about 10 years, okay? So I was training staff at that time, and my daughter at that time was taking piano lessons. And I started to notice two really strong similarities between my daughter's attitude or thinking towards playing the piano and a lot of Malaysians thinking or attitude towards English. So first of all, what is so different? How do people like Faisal do it? So to answer that question, I'm going to take you back about 10 years, okay? So I was training staff at that time and my daughter at that time was taking piano lessons. And I started to notice two really strong similarities between my daughter's attitude 
or thinking towards playing the piano and a lot of Malaysians thinking or attitude towards English. Now, first of all, I should tell you, my daughter absolutely hated piano, hated the lessons, hated practicing. This is my daughter practicing piano, okay? This is as good as it got. <laughs> this is the real thing. And she dreaded going to piano lessons because to my daughter, going to piano lessons, she was filled with this sort of dread because it was all about not screwing up, right? Because like for a lot of piano students, to both my daughter and her teacher, her success in piano was measured by how few mistakes she made. Now at the same time, I noticed that a lot of Malaysians went into English conversations with the same sort of feeling of dread, this sort of feeling that they were going to be judged by how many mistakes they were going to make. Now, first of all, I should tell you, my daughter absolutely hated piano, hated the lessons, hated practicing. This is my daughter practicing piano, okay? This is as good as it got. <laughs> this is the real thing. And she dreaded going to piano lessons because to my daughter, going to piano lessons, she was filled with this sort of dread because it was all about not screwing up, right? Because like for a lot of piano students, to both my daughter and her teacher, her success in piano was measured by how few mistakes she made. Now at the same time, I noticed that a lot of Malaysians went into English conversations with the same sort of feeling of dread, this sort of feeling that they were going to be judged by how many mistakes they were going to make. So I could see these similarities, but I still couldn't figure out, okay, what is it about these people like Faisal that are so different that can just do it smoothly, calmly, with confidence? And one day I discovered that answer, and I discovered it quite by chance. It was a day when my computer broke down and I had to go to a cyber cafe. Now, okay, it was my first time, and I discovered cyber cafes are disgusting places, okay? They're really gross, they're smelly, and they're filled with boys, and they're all playing noisy, violent games. They're just disgusting places. But I had to go there, so I sit down, and I start noticing this guy beside me, and I become very, very interested in this guy next to me. Now, this guy is playing this game that is basically, it's like shooting people until they die, and that's it, right? That's the game, right? And, and I'm noticing that this guy is not very good. He's like, in fact, terrible, right? Because I'm looking and I'm seeing like a lot of shooting. And, 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 and not much dying, right? <laughs> but what really interested me was behind this lousy player were three of his friends sort of standing there watching him play. And what I really noticed was, even though this guy was terrible, even though his friends were watching him, there was no embarrassment, there was no feeling of being judged, there was no shyness. In fact, quite the opposite. This guy's like totally focused on the bad guy, smile on his face. All he can think about is, is, is killing these guys, right? And I'm watching him and I suddenly realized this is it. This is the same attitude, attitude that people like Faisal have when they speak English. Just like this guy, when Faisal goes into an English conversation, he doesn't feel judged. He's entirely focused on the person that he's speaking to and the result he wants to get. So I could see these similarities, but I still couldn't figure out, okay, what is it about these people like Faisal that are so different that can just do it smoothly, calmly, with confidence? And one day I discovered that answer, and I discovered it quite by chance. It was a day when my computer broke down and I had to go to a cyber cafe. Now, okay, it was my first time and I discovered cyber cafes are disgusting places, okay? They're really gross. They're smelly and they're filled with boys and they're all playing noisy, violent games. They're just disgusting places. But I had to go there, so I sit down and I start noticing this guy beside me and I become very, very interested in this guy next to me. Now, this guy is playing this game that is basically, it's like shooting people 
until they die. And that's it, right? That's the game, right? And, and I'm noticing that this guy is not very good. He's like, in fact, terrible, right? Because I'm looking and I'm seeing like a lot of shooting and, 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 and not much dying, right? <laughs> but what really interested me was behind this lousy player were three of his friends sort of standing there watching him play. And what I really noticed was even though this guy was terrible, even though his friends were watching him, there was no embarrassment. There was no feeling of being judged. There was no shyness. In fact, quite the opposite. This guy's like totally focused on the bad guy, smile on his face. All he can think about is, is, is killing these guys, right? And I'm watching him and I suddenly realized this is it. This is the same attitude, attitude that people like Faisal have when they speak English. Just like this guy, when Faisal goes into an English conversation, he doesn't feel judged. He's entirely focused on the person that he's speaking to and the result he wants to get. Now, the challenge is that we know in schools all around the world, right, English is not really being taught like it's a tool to play with. It's still being taught like it's an art to master. And students are judged more on correctness than on clarity. Now, the challenge is that we know in schools all around the world, right, English is not really being taught like it's a tool to play with. It's still being taught like it's an art to master. And students are judged more on correctness than on clarity. And if you're in a stressful situation and you're having a conversation and you're trying to give a result to someone and say it correctly, your brain multitasks. It cannot do two things at once. And what I see is the brain just shutting down. And you may recognize these three symptoms of the brain shutting down. The first one is that your listening goes. Someone's talking to you and you're so busy thinking about how you're going to respond and, and express yourself correctly, you don't actually hear what the other person said. And I can see a lot of nodding in the audience. The second thing to go is your speaking. Your mind sort of shuts down and that vocabulary you do know just disappears and you, the words don't come out. The third thing to go is your confidence. And the worst thing about this is you may only be confident because you cannot express yourself clearly, but to the person talking to you, they may misunderstand this as a lack of confidence in your ability to do the job, to perform. And if you're in a stressful situation and you're having a conversation and you're trying to give a result to someone and say it correctly, your brain multitasks. It cannot do two things at once. And what I see is the brain just shutting down. And you may recognize these three symptoms of the brain shutting down. The first one, is that your listening goes. Someone's talking to you and you're so busy thinking about how you're going to respond and, and express yourself correctly, you don't actually hear what the other person said. And I can see a lot of nodding in the audience. The second thing to go is your speaking. Your mind sort of shuts down and that vocabulary you do know just disappears and you, the words don't come out. The third thing to go is your confidence. And the worst thing about this is you may only be confident because you cannot express yourself clearly, but to the person talking to you, they may misunderstand this as a lack of confidence in your ability to do the job, to perform. إلى هنا نكون قد انتهينا من هذا الدرس آمل أنكم قد استفدتم إذا استفدتم شاركوا الدرس مع أصدقائكم حتى تعم الفائدة وإلى أن نلتقي بحول الله في درس جديد أراكم بخير See you in the next video